Hello there, welcome to episode 4 of my advanced tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. Today we're going to go and complete the city core that we've uh, started building in the last episode. We're going to set up a dining hall and a tavern down here, and also we're going to start mining deeper, because we need to check out where are the caverns, where's the ore, and what will we do here ultimately with it. So these will be the main topics. As usual, I have a main topic for my episodes, but since this is a Let's Play series, all manner of different things will cross our way, and I'll do my best to explain them so you get a better understanding of the everyday occurrences of being an overseer in Dwarf Fortress. So, we got this all nailed down. These are 30 apartments and this is more than enough for our fortress. So, the first thing that we're going to do here today is we're going to axe away the dormitory because people use it as long as it is available and it is truly not necessary to use these because, you know, it's just the worst way of sleeping, okay? We're going to use those beds somewhere else. The rest of this area has is uh, flagged for removal, and we've just heard that sound. Well, first dwarf wants to create an artifact. So, here we are already sidetracked by some random occurrence, just like I said. So, Fey Mood. The moment a dwarf wants to create an artifact, they run around and collect items that they need for the creation of said artifact. There are different types of uh, of strange moods. Fey mood is just one of them. And once he's done with the process, whatever item he will be he will have created, he will have a legendary skill of that in, for the remainder of his life. And the artifact will either go into our personal possession or the organization of your fortress or he is going to keep it as an heirloom. We don't know that yet, but we will in a second. So the progress here has been almost finished. Only a couple of doors have to be placed down, but we're not going to uh, burden ourselves with that. I'm going to go and mine out these things. So the kit had all the materials it wanted. Once you have works, furiously on the uh, on the artifact thingy, then everything's a okay. Okay, so we are going to go here and drill a staircase down. I'm holding left shift again to make a staircase 10 stories deep. Oh, we are going to want, I want that on a high priority. So he has created a ashen amulet and uh, it's going to get offered to the trade of slaughter. That's the local government's name. Don't ask me what's uh, happening here. So, one of our dudes already has a family heirloom hatch. By the way, here, this is the, the objects menu where you can check out your artifacts and several other thingies. So, as you see here, the value is uh, fairly high and it is very important to this little boy here because he has now created that. He's now a legendary woodcrafter because woodcraft was the involved skill and if the artifact goes missing, this will be making him extremely, extremely unhappy because he's basically, yeah, come on. It's it's his life work. Already done while he's a child. That's concerning. Anywho, let's get back to the mining topic, shall we? So our miners are drilling a hole fairly deep. Bloodstone, shale. Here we go. So we've struck several layers of bauxite. Shale yet again. Dirt. All right, so here's a little bit of geology. So the game has many different stone layers. Um, I made a uh, lengthy tutorial about how the game's uh, stone layer system works, but to compress it into a quick summary, there's in this game a pretty realistic depiction of geology. That means there is a certain logic behind what spawns where. To 
make it not as hard to understand, keep an eye out whenever the environmental stone changes. So basically here rock salt. Wherever there's rock salt we will find the same type of gems and ores. Wherever there's bauxite and shale we will find the same types of gems and ores. Wherever there's, uh, what's the next one? Chert? Yeah, wherever there's chert we will find you know, that, that's the way how you can summarize it. So what you find in a certain type of stone, you usually will find in the other stone layers as well. So now we get on over here, but now I flick my mouse wheel twice to go 20 stories deep. Here I'm also going to go for a little construction. Two walls. And a door then in between. So let's follow our Brave Miner. This shaft here has a sole purpose of breaching into the caverns. I really hope that I'm just going to be able to strike the caverns at some depth. And that's why I'm doing the ball thing here. Because, you know, I want to be able to seal off that area if something bad happens. And strike the caverns and the magma. And a magma pool. Oh boy, we get lucky. We can make magma tutorials here. Ha! <laughs> Man, is it Christmas already? So, what has happened here is I've uh, dug down deeper and then we struck a, uh, a pocket of, uh, of, of open ground and welcome to the caverns. So, the first thing that I want to do here is I want to uh, widen up this place here a little bit. And I want to remove the, the connection here. So, wait a sec, we delete that one. And that one. I want to put up an alternative staircase so we can destroy that one completely. Just to be sure that nothing that can fly is able to breach into our fortress through that hole in the ground there. Because, you know, you, got, you can't be too paranoid. So, first we axe the staircase. And we have a uh, separate one here. Because, you know, now the way back, way back up would be destroyed. That's why I went for the second staircase. And next step. We put a piece of floor on top of that, and now we're uh, we're completely safe. Nothing bad can happen from this place anymore. Okay, brilliant. So why did I do that, you might ask yourself. You see that floor fungus down there? The moment you breach the caverns, the moment you discover the caverns, this floor fungus will now start growing also up here, and that's what I've been after. So, we're going to dig out the rest of this chamber. And as soon as enough of that floor fungus has grown in here, we're going to remove the pasture from up here, down here. Because your animals can eat that floor fungus just nicely. That's why it's really cool to breach into the caverns as soon as possible. You don't need to do anything with them. They just spread animal food down to your place and that's uh, quite a good thing. So, I meant to play uh, to build traps the last episode and I didn't make it to, to there. So, let's, uh, let's do this. So, cage traps in front of our uh, fortress. Because I'm a big sucker for those. Cage traps are insanely powerful. So, set of cage traps, and if ever the enemy will breach through these, we're going to set up some rockfall traps as well. Rockfall traps are the most simple, albeit very effective way of defending yourself. Oh, well, so you'd make that like this. So, rocks, uh, rockfall traps, they really only require two things, a mechanism and a boulder. And that's that. They don't need anything else. And that's why they are so good. Because as you see, this little cluster here will destroy any any pilfering goblins later down the road that want to attack our base. And it's a pretty good way to secure yourself before you have the capacity for a large-scale military force. The cage traps in front here are going to defend us from really, really dangerous things. And the rockfall traps will be for those occasions when there's just too much clutter that needs to be dealt with. So, this little corridor here, well, let's put a door in here, you know, I did it already. You could also put a hatch on top of the 
on the top of the stairway. There are several ways of protecting yourself, you know. But now we have two mines. This one will be our economical mine, so to say. And this will be my exploratory mine where I'm going to look for new caverns and the like. You can organize that as you want to, of course. But that's a system that I... That really, really worked damn well for me. So, speaking about working damn well for me, let's go for our first large-scale mining ops. So, I'm designating a bit of a rectangle here, and now I hold left shift again, flick the switch downstairs 10 stories, just like that. Let's see, we're, uh, we're missing out a few stories here, huh? So, let's uh, complete that just like that. And now we're going to dig out a basic shape in in 10 different levels. There is one downside to this method. Your dwarfs are just silly goofballs that will do the job on all levels at once. Instead of finishing one level at a time, they're just doing it like that. And here, this message is, by the way, a, a proof that I had derped. So if any of your animals starve to death, that's because I have, or in this, or you have forgotten, to assign the animals, the pets of the new immigrants to the pastures. They come with new pets, and uh, if you don't assign them to the pasture whenever a new white wave arrives, they will ultimately follow their owners and die in your fortress, which is kind of sad, so... I'm still working on that habit, I haven't made it yet, but uh, basically growing a habit out of looking uh, into your, after your pastures whenever a new wave of immigrants hits town is a good thing to do. That's the, that's the gist of it. Okay, so let's see, we have not announced all the bedrooms yet. It's pretty important that you assign those bedrooms as well because otherwise the dwarves won't claim them. By the way, in case you didn't know, your dwarves will auto automatically claim bedrooms for themselves. You don't need to assign them. You can assign them though, if you want to give a, a, a specific dwarf a specific mm -hmm. bedroom, you know. So um, I've, uh, I've lost orientation. So we're going to go and uh, get ourselves a new hotkey. So this will be hotkey mm -hmm. F5 because, you know, we need the mines also on a hotkey. So we've struck diamonds. Interesting. I wonder if that's an indicator of us hitting the mine, the caverns also here. I already wondered if that, if that wasn't what happened. So here we do the same thing as we did before, but uh, here I'm going to show you a different way you can do it. So since we can't, use staircase building like this here. If you do it like that and the, uh, and the square below is empty, you'll get something like that. There will be only a hole in the ground, but no up staircase. So in this scenario, you need to construct the staircase upstairs. And uh, we're going to use the church boulders that are lying around everywhere. Just like this, the last time, I'm going to axe this staircase right away because we don't want any unwanted uh, in, intruders into our into our mine, don't we? So, bauxite, by the way, doesn't have any function in this game. It is in real in real terms, it is the metal that you use to make alum uh, aluminum. But in our world, it doesn't serve any purpose. I'm a little bit nervous. Please, guys, come and destroy that thing. So here, this is because I have everything on priority one. Technically, it would have been smarter if we'd had it done like that with priority two. But luckily, if you ever made that mistake like I did here, just repaint the job, you know? Just make sure you don't... Uh destroy stuff that you want to. So here they, they want to destroy now the entire staircase. So we have to work with some remodeling here. Wait a sec, why didn't that? Oh, I'm so stupid. I think I just uh, did the wrong command, didn't I? You already saw that, didn't you? So of course you need to apply the correct commands for that to work. Here we go, silly old me. Okay, but uh, we can now safely use priority one. That's what I was originally after. 
to X that thing here. Ah, it was because they used the same icon. Ha! That what got, that's what got me. So here, we're going to slap down a piece of floor here yet again. And also I'm using a, a piece of uh, a, a ramp. Man, so many misclicks. I'm sorry, guys. My, my fingers slipped yet again. Of course, we're going to put a door piece down there, not a ram. So, a monster hunter wants to join our fortress. I'm noping that out because your monster hunters, you know, they, they want to go into the caverns at some point and we're just not there yet. And uh, I don't want to explore the caverns at that point. No, thank you. So, we have now two access points to the caverns and a lot of different little layers that we're going to use for our mining ops. As you see here, we haven't found any mineral or we haven't found any... Um, ores, that's the word I was looking for, sorry. Uh, we haven't found any ores here so far, so I'm going to add in another uh, layer of pressure into the system. So here I'm using again um, shift scroll, you know. It's just a little bit uncomfortable because we have to uh, flick upstairs and downstairs nine stories, so it looks a little bit. Uh, messy but it's uh... it is also quite messy just like i just realized okay whatever so multi assigning of several floors you can also use macros for that here it all went a little bit sloppy because i uh i have a hard time using the shift command smoothly but uh you know by scrolling through it, you ultimately see what's happening there. But it doesn't look like we're finding anything except those fancy gemstones. But, you know, getting those gemstones is also pretty much worth it. So we're going to go for that mining ops. But I'll leave it like there, because right now, our miners are are really, really busy people, you know? They're doing a hell of a job right there. So, meanwhile, let's expand on our industry of food and clothing because clothing is something we're not making right now and setting up a fabric industry well you can't start too early with that if you ask me so we're going to dig out a little bit of a extra corridor for that here and let's see i hope that hallway here is not going to be noped out by the aquifer yet again and we're also going to make some work with those gemstones because as you see down here stuff is piling up so we're going to go into the work orders menu and tell our jeweler to process these for us for later usage be it be it uh, sales or actually decorating things with it so cut gems is the job we need and we configure it in a way that there's always going to be a amount of five rough gems left in the stockpile. This is super important because otherwise you're going to have sometimes not the materials for artifact creation. Rough gems are a regularly requested items, item by moody dwarves, so you should better be owning a few. So let's see if our rock salt block production is... Uh, somewhere oh, well, almost almost so we're going to floor the majority of the room then something like that i mean it is okay i just want to start the work here because the dining hall will be a major improvement for our dwarves here so we're going to start with that because basically i just want to have the fur the, the flooring down so i can put some some tables in here Okay, beautiful stuff. We're going to do the same for the tavern later on, but just like I uh, assumed, the the mines here are not really yielding any ores yet so far. It seems as if we need to go deeper downstairs to find that. And just like I mentioned, look at them. They they don't go for one level at once. Like I said, they're they're doing this weird way of working through your patterns that you assign, but you know, 
I don't, I'm not in any hurry, so I'm okay with them going through this in the tempo that they decide. I'm grabbing all the bloodstone that I'm, uh, that I'm finding here. By the way, this is the icon of the lowest value of gems. Um, you can designate the value of a gem just by its uh, sprite on the floor. This is the lowest value sort of gem. I'm going to show you the other sprites when they uh, show on up. So, I'm really curious to see if we find anything in the chert layer that's uh, going to be useful for us. Because so far we were heavily disappointed by the results of our first mining trip. But that's, uh, that's totally okay. What we got there is a really large amount of gemstone we can work with. Also a large amount of boulders that we can work with. So basically, and if you are into architecture and construction, this is already quite a wealth. But it was not what we're looking after, what, uh, what we're looking for. So the next step we're going to take is we need to relay our mining ops away from the caverns because you know we cannot afford to drill a hole into the caverns so we're going to go and make us a tunnel that allows us to continue our mining operations while not breaching the caverns. But it was perfectly uh, nice and according to plan. And as you see here, the floor fungus is already everywhere. So let's go and set up our actual pasture that we want to have. The benefits of that are pretty clear and simple. You have a protected area that is not that easily attacked by raiders later down the road. Because, you know, those stinking goblins, they love to go for the livestock first. So... It's better to have them underground in a safe room. So we're deleting that zone here. And uh, just like that, our livestock will be stored safely. Also, I am going to put up a animal training zone here because it rocks to train your animals. So we go on over here to the pets and livestock tab and we have dogs here. You can train them to be either war dogs or hunting dogs we're training ours to be war dogs because that's pretty cool early game protection they will go against everything hostile and as you see there you just need to assign it and then they get on over here to the uh, training area and a moment later your dog your stray dogs will turn into war dogs it's just that simple you can transform a couple of animals into war animals there you go stray war dogs just like that You've got to look where the if the if the icon is available to train them or not. That's basically that's basically it. So here we're going to go for the same strat as we did it before. We're going to go downstairs ten levels, just like that. So hopefully this will work, because this was a big disappointment. So another monster hunter is applying. Well, no big surprises for me. So, all right, I'm already seeing that my plans are here uh, totally not working out, so we're canceling that for now. And let's see, we're going to use a tier two, a priority two designator this time. And let's see. Something like that. So, All right, we already see here that this whole thing doesn't work, okay. So it's a little bit complicated to navigate across the, the caverns like that. Basically, we're also doing exploration here while we're doing this, you know. So probably we should delete that one here. I always try to avoid breaching into the, into the caverns wherever I can. So, no thank you guys. I mean, it would be... Uh, Monster Hunters are interesting in so far, as they are working as a free militia. But they, well, I personally find them too uh, unreliable in, in my own fortresses to, to regularly work with them. So we're going to go downstairs here, and let's see. I'm not going to use Shift-click here this time, so... We got to be going somewhere... <laughs> well, 
complicated part here is for me to find a uh, place where we can really descend deeper. Here, that's a point. That's a point that we're going to go for. So you basically need to look for a pillar that you can use as a breaching point into the deeper layers of, uh, of the stone. Because, you know, we don't really want to have any business with the caverns so far. And this way, we can dig around the caverns just like that. Because it's obvious, the stuff we're looking for is not in these depth layers. So, it's going to be quite a challenge to get what we want. Okay, so, or I think I have the wrong priorities again, don't I? Yeah, these are only priority two jobs. What, why they're not getting done. So, we're going to assign them to a higher priority. Because I really, really want to know what's going on downstairs, you know? We need those metals. Metal refining is now basically the next step for our little fortress here. And that's why I'm so hell bent on my explorations. So here we have a new, um, a new layer. We got now a nice layer. So we're going to go now for a uh, little bit of a probing ops, just like we did before. And here yet again, we drill down a shaft of 10 of 10, staircase, 10 levels of staircase, you know? Oh, that's something I want to delete. Those little stray digging jobs, you know? They do no good. So here we're just doing our same thing. Either we probe into the next uh, layer of the caverns or through different stone types. There's a lot of gnice here. And, uh... We've discovered the next cavern layer, so same old, same old. We go and dig deeper here into that thing, and then we axe these staircases here and build new ones. Ah, new floors over these, I mean. You get the idea. So we're uh, we're now exploring our cavern system at a pretty uh, quick, pretty quick pace. I do appreciate that. So construct the uh, floors on top of that. Don't worry too much when you breach the caverns. There's uh, usually no immediate death hatching out of these. You just should get yourself uh, wrapped around it rather faster than uh, slower. Okay, so that means we're going to go this way. And probably if we get lucky, we're going to discover what's there, but uh, we're not going to continue that way in today's episode. For today, I finally want to finish another topic, and that's the dining hall. So let's see. Floors. We got now enough rock salt blocks to finish that thing. There we go. And let's set up the door, uh, the the tables and the chairs. So. It's really important to note your dwarfs don't want to have more people on a table than one. You know, one table, one dwarf. And we have another uh, fey mooded dwarf here. So ten tables here like that. And we're going to put the chairs down like that. This way they can socialize. They're going to socialize with the people left and right to them, but also into this direction. This is, as far as I know, the most uh, effective way of uh, going through this. So, this guy here shouts, I must have logs, I must have bones. So, first off, logs, yes, we got them. So, it must be the bones. We get on over here and we are going to slaughter one of our stray yak bulls because we have one yak cow three yak bulls so there will be no problem whatsoever to get new yak cows so this icon here marks them for butchering and since we have set up a butcher's shop the job is immediately getting in there and then when the butchering has been done bones will spawn the leather spawned by that job will be automatically processed in the tanner's shop and the rest will go in the according stockpiles easy peasy and uh, here you see, our little uh, moody dwarf child now hauls these stray yak bull bones down there to his craft dwarf's workshop. If you have a moody dwarf, really look after them. They need that. They will die without your help. 
it's just like that. And uh, for some odd reason, the construction here, oh yeah, I can't really tell. Oh, I'm always so nervous when there's a hole in the ground like that, but it's actually not that terrible, you know? First off, we could seal the whole mining tunnels quite easily. Or, no, we cannot. <laughs> so let's change that. Because in my genius, I have only put up a safety mechanism here, but not here. So, but after all, this place has turned into much more of an exploratory mine than the other one. Yeah, so, so it goes, you know? So it goes. So we're going to put this one here on the Shift F1 hotkey. I'm just using not F6 to F8 because they behave uh, weirdly with my uh, streaming software and recording software, just in case you were wondering. And uh, let's do the last thing. We got a Yakbone Scepter, a wonderful useless item. Let's do the last thing for today's episode. We're going to slap down the Dining Hall Designator, and that's not the very last thing. Now, one last thing. I put up a stockpile zone here for prepared food because if there's prepared food in their vicinity they're going to grab it from the closest stockpile so if anybody has the the urge to eat something it's going to be they go to that stockpile and eat it here much less pathing you know my fortress here is optimized a lot around um avoidance of unnecessary pathing and i hope you guys enjoy so it's been a good time. We have made a sick mining uh, ops happen here. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to go in the next episode deeper than that. Hopefully finally find some ores. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave me your comments down below. I always love to hear from you, as you know. And feel free to slap a thumbs up on that video if you want to make sure other people find it easier because that's what the algorithm likes and last but not least consider subscribing there is daily content popping up from my side and i'd be delighted to have you so playlist links are down uh, down in the description box for a beginner's tutorial series for the entire playlist of this one and for all the other tutorials i made so thanks for watching everybody and see you next time